Today I'm going to be showing you guys the best settings for OBS Studio to record PC games in 2022. I'm also going to be showing you guys how to separate your face cam and your gameplay, giving you more control when you edit later on, and this is something which a bunch of the larger YouTubers already do. So I've got in front of me a fresh install of OBS Studio version 28. Uh, this way, if you guys have just downloaded the software and you're wanting to record your games, then your software should be looking exactly like mine here. So before we add any face cam or gameplay to our canvas to show in the preview, we need to start off with the settings first. So click settings down in the bottom right and you start off in the general tab. General tab, there's nothing really important in here in terms of recording games. The only thing which I think is a nice thing to touch on is the theme, uh, the software, if you want to put it back to its old look that would be gray however i've been liking this new yummy look it really looks nice with all the colors here doesn't have any effect on the layout or anything so don't worry about it too much just pick a thing that you like for stream we aren't streaming so this is just all about gameplay recording if you guys want a stream tutorial that might come in the future if there's enough demand for it but instead we're going to go to output this is where we actually start dialing in our settings for our recording now if any of you want an easy to use tool that enables you to share your ideas and also create tutorials just like this then demo creator is for you Created by the guys over at Wondershare, Demo Creator offers all the necessary tools to record, stream, and edit high quality guides and tutorials that your audience will love. The tool even supports 120 FPS game recording with real-time screen drawing, allowing you to drive focus to key points on your screen. It includes webcam recording too, to ensure that you keep up that personal face-to-face -face feel with your fans, but also offers virtual backgrounds and even virtual avatars for all of you aspiring VTubers out there. Within the easy to use drag and drop editor, you've got a bunch of gaming effect packs, an intuitive audio editing component with a fun voice changer, as well as a packed sound effect studio to give your videos that extra bump. If you head to the video description right now, there's a link to the Demo Creator website where you can download a free trial. The trial will include watermarks on any exported video, but it's a great way to check out all of Demo Creator's features. Wondershare also have a competition right now where if you create a video and share it with the hashtag present with Demo Creator, then you'll be in a chance of winning a prize. Three creators will get premium licenses for Demo Creator, whilst one lucky winner will get $100 worth of Amazon gift cards. So head over to the link in the description and try out Demo Creator today. So output mode, you need to change this from simple to advanced, which gives us much more customizability over exactly how the software is gonna run. Come over to recording, because once again, we don't care about streaming. And we are now looking at firstly, type. Keep type to standard. You don't need to set the select the second one, we just leave this at standard. Recording path, this is personal preference. Ideally, you wanna to record to a fairly fast trial drive because we are gonna be recording some larger files. And if you don't have decent write speed on the hard drive, it might lead to the uh, recordings looking stuttery. So for me, I'll just leave it at my, uh, my C drive because it's an SSD, it's quick. That'll do fine for me. Recording format. Now, I'd recommend you either go for MP4 or MKV. Uh, both of these work well. Uh, when, it term, when it comes to actually putting them into uh, your editing software later on. But MKV makes it so that if the software crashes while you're recording, you won't lose the recording. It will just stop the recording there. Whereas with MP4, you'd end up with a corrupt recording. So I tend to stick with MKV um, rather than MP4. Audio track, this is personal preference. How many audio tracks do you need? Typically I have three audio tracks, which is one for my mic, one for my gameplay, and one for my Discord audio. You can look up tutorials on how you actually split all those audios out. For me, I've got a Wave XLR by Elgato, which allows me to split out those streams as needed. Next, we have the encoder. This is very, very important. Now, I would recommend for anyone who can do it that they select NVENC H264. This is gonna use your NVIDIA card, assuming you've got one, and it enables you to uh, utilize the technology that's in your NVIDIA card, and it makes the encoding very efficient doesn't have too much impact on your FPS, doesn't require you to have loads of power in your CPU instead, all really good stuff. Next, rescale output, just leave this as is. This will be your native resolution. For me, that's 1080p. If you have a bigger monitor or something, then this will be a different number. Do not change this rescale output setting. It becomes much more heavier on your system. If you wanna do any scaling in terms of output into a different resolution, we can do it later on. Custom muxer settings, leave this as is, and automatic file splitting. Something you can do if you want to, if you wanna split every 10 minutes and get 10 minute chunks, that can be quite helpful when it comes to editing or something like that. For me, I have no problem, so I don't need to do that. 
into encoder settings. This is the really important stuff. So rate control, you've got a bunch of different options here. We're gonna leave it at CBR, which is constant bit rate. What constant bit rate means is that when we set a bit rate down here, we are gonna be constantly at that bit rate no matter what's on the screen as opposed to a variable bit rate where you have a max and an average bit rate. Uh, variable bit rate can be more efficient because in maybe bits in games which you're recording where there's not much going on on screen, it limits the file size because it drops the bit rate. But for maximum quality, I'd recommend most people just stick with a constant bit rate throughout the whole video. In terms of what we set for that bit rate, I would recommend for most people that we go for 60,000 kilobytes per second. A lot of people are going to say, wow, that's really high. But it gives you incredible quality. I think if you're just running at 1080p, you can get away if you want to with going down to something like 50,000, but I think for good measure, just, just go for 60,000. And if you're running out of hard drive space, you might need to get a dedicated recording hard drive in your system. Then we go to keyframe interval. By default, this will be zero, but we actually want to set this to two. Uh, the reason for this is it will have no real effect on how the video looks in the end, but when it comes to editing in post-production, uh, Keyframe Interval 2 works really nicely with things like Premiere Pro, uh, DaVinci Resolve, and Vegas uh, when it comes to actually previewing the video. It's hard to show in this tutorial, but you'll just find that by setting this to two seconds, it's much more compatible. It runs a lot more smooth. This has been tested by multiple techie guys who have done this kind of stuff before, so trust me on this one. Preset. A lot of people will just select this and go, hmm, max quality, sounds good. No, we wanna select quality here. The reason for this is that max quality gives you barely any extra quality in terms of how this encodes. We've already set a really high bit rate, so we're getting good quality. All that max quality does is it just pushes the system a lot harder. It will lower your FPS in games more for very little gain. And it's a real big trap that I see a lot of other creators uh, who are making these kind of tutorials tell you to do. So just leave it at quality. Profile, leave this at high. Uh, this is just the best for basically any high definition footage. So 1080p or above really, you need to just leave this set at high. Look ahead, keep this off. Psycho visual tuning, leave this on. A lot of this stuff is already set up nicely for us, which is good. And then GPU, we're leaving that at zero. Zero just means that you're actually selecting your first or well, your only GPU in your system. For me, I've only got one GPU. Most people only have one GPU these days. Just leave this set at zero. It means the first one. Doesn't make much sense, but trust me. And then max B frames, drop this to one. This is kind of similar to the keyframe interval two second thing I said earlier. It just improves performance and compatibility ability with post-production editing software. Next, let's head over to audio. And simple thing here is just to go down through all your tracks and put them all to 320 kilobits per second. Uh, there's really no reason to not have this set at maximum quality. We're not streaming, so we're not really worried about bandwidth uh, in terms of audio plus video. This is just a local recording and pushing your audio to the max is always helpful. There's no point having a nice you know, XLR or even like a nice USB microphone and limiting your bitrate on your audio. So just max that out for all your tracks. And then replay buffer is something which I don't really use so I'm not gonna cover it here. Next, we move on to audio. Just a couple of things to cover here. Audio is a very, very important thing for any video, so don't, don't skip on it. It's very, very important. Sample rate, you've got 44.1 or 48. The key thing here is you just need to match your kilohertz here to whatever your audio setup is using in terms of your sound card, so the sound that you're hearing uh, from your games as well as your microphone. For me, all of my stuff is set at 48 kilohertz. You can go find some tutorials on how you actually check what kilohertz you're using, but a lot of people these days will have 48, so I'd recommend choose 48 for most people, but make sure it's set the same as everything, so otherwise you'll get loads of desync, which is not fun. Then down here in global audio devices, you can set your individual audios. I'm not gonna cover this in this video, but this is where I would add in my three different audio tracks. So I would have two desktop audios and one mic audio, and then they would all appear on the uh, mic, uh, or sorry, the soundboard down here. Uh, so that's how that's where you can do that kind of stuff, but I'm not gonna cover all that details uh, in here. There's nothing else inside of audio that is important. So let's move on to video. Now this is where if you want to go for the separate game and webcam or face cam, this is where it all begins. So base canvas resolution. If you are just recording a game or you're just in the scenario where you're recording a game and you're just putting your face in, in the corner or something and you're just gonna leave it like that and you don't wanna have all that control afterwards, then just set your base canvas resolution to your monitor resolution or the resolution that your game's running at. For me, that's 1920 by 1080 or 1080p. And then output scaled resolution, set this to the same. So 1920 by 1080. And then come on down here and set this to 60 FPS. 
uh, there will be no downscaling filter required, obviously, because the resolutions match. Um, and then 60 FPS, it's a standard. No one wants to see 30 FPS footage these days, really, when it comes to gaming. And we'll come back to this uh, stuff for the separate face cam and webcam later. Uh, then we're going to apply all this. There's not really anything else we need to worry about. Uh, advanced, there's some stuff in here which you can dial in. There's something like you can turn up the process priority to above normal if needed. It's something which I do actually do because it means that my OBS will always have the priority and it means that my recordings don't get ruined by my game taking up too much resource. Uh, it might make your game run a bit worse but it's better to have your game run worse and your recording be fine than your game be fine and your recording be all stuttery. So I'd recommend you set this to above normal in general. And then everything down here in terms of video, I would just leave this as is. And the last thing we need to do is add our sources. So what I'll do here is I'll right click in here and go to add. Now for most people, you'll probably just wanna add a game capture or a display capture. I've got a Elgato 4K60 Pro, so I actually select a video capture device, and I'm going to call this Game, and then I select, well, there's my camera, that's not actually what I wanted to add yet, but uh, I can select my 4K60 Pro here, and you see the mirror effect, which doesn't look too nice, so we'll, uh, we'll just leave it as is, um, and then I can also add in my camera, so if I come down here, once again, video capture device, so this will be the same for all you guys, you go cam, and then we've got our camera, click OK, and then we can start dragging this around and scaling it as is. And this is your standard setup. You guys might just have no cam and you've just got your gameplay. You might have your camera on in a corner or something like that. But what I want to show you is how you can actually separate your cam from your gameplay. And that starts with us going back into the video settings, as I mentioned. So in video, what we actually want to do is we want to double the space on our canvas so that the width is double the length and we can essentially fit our camera in full resolution next to our um, gameplay in full resolution. The way we're going to do that is you can actually, rather than doing the drop down here, you can actually just type in in this box. And what we want to do is take the first number and just double it. So I've got 1920. Double of 1920 is 3840. And then you leave your height or the smaller number, the second number, just as, as it is. So 3840 by 1080. Okay. And then you want to come down to the output scaled resolution and do the same thing. Okay. 3840 by 1080. So they match still, which is good. We don't want to have any scaling happening. And then simply click apply. What you'll get now is a really big canvas. And all you have to do is grab your game, move that over to the right. It nicely snaps in place so you don't accidentally move it off your screen. And then you can take your camera and you can have it to the left. So then when you go into your editing software after you've recorded your game, you can import your 3840 by 1080 video that will look something like this. And you can then just duplicate that layer. So you've got two tracks and then you can just crop the video because you can do cropping in Vegas or DaVinci or whatever. You can crop off the gameplay part of one of the layers. So you've only got your camera and then you can crop off the camera part of the other layer. So you've only got your gameplay and then you've got your two layers and you can actually edit as need be and that's far better for any YouTube content creator because it gives you that freedom when it comes to editing. And then when we're all done with that, you can simply come down here and click start recording and start recording your games. Anyway, guys, that is everything I've got for today. If you found this video informative, then please do leave a like down below and subscribe for more awesome videos coming very soon. It's been four years or Dave. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye-bye.